ഗുഡ് മോർണിംഗ് നമ്മുടെ യാത്രയുടെ മലേഷ്യ യാത്രയുടെ മൂന്നാം ദിനം ഇന്ന് യാത്ര പക്ഷേ ഇന്ന് ഇവിടെ വന്നതിൽ ഏറ്റവും മനോഹരമാണ് എന്ന് പ്രതീക്ഷിക്കപ്പെടുന്ന സ്ഥലമാണ് ജെന്നി ഹൈലാൻഡ് ഇന്നത്തെ യാത്ര അങ്ങനെയൊക്കെയാണ് അങ്ങോട്ടാണ് ഇന്നത്തെ യാത്ര അങ്ങോട്ടാണ് ഒരു രസകരമായ ഒത്ര കാഴ്ചകൾ പ്രകൃതിയുടെ എന്താ മടുത്തിട്ടിലേക്ക് പ്രകൃതിയുടെ നന്മകളിലേക്കുള്ള ഒരു യാത്രയാണ് പക്ഷെ എന്നെ പോലെയുള്ള ആളെ ഏറ്റവും ഇഷ്ടപ്പെടുന്നതാണ് ഈ പച്ചപ്പും ആ പ്രകൃതിയൊക്കെ അപ്പോൾ അങ്ങോട്ടൊരു യാത്ര ഈ ശരിക്കും മലേഷ്യയ്ക്ക് വരുമ്പോഴുള്ള ഏറ്റവും കൂടുതൽ കാണാൻ ആഗ്രഹിച്ചത് നമ്മുടെ യൂട്യൂബിലൊക്കെ മറ്റു വീഡിയോസിലൊക്കെ കണ്ടിട്ടുള്ള ജെന്നി ഹൈലാൻഡിൽ എന്നുള്ളത് എന്താ പറയുക ഏറ്റവും ഇഷ്ടമുള്ളൊരു കാര്യമാണ് ഇപ്പോഴത്തെ ഒത്തിരി പ്രതീക്ഷയോടെ കാത്തിരിക്കുന്നതാണ് അപ്പോൾ ഡേ ത്രീയിലെ ഹൈലൈറ്റ് അതാണ് ദെൻ ഈവനിങ്ങിലെ ചൈന മാർക്കറ്റ് ഇല്ല പറഞ്ഞ നമ്മൾ അവിടുന്ന് ചൈനീസ് മാർക്കറ്റ് കാണുന്നുണ്ട് ചൈനീസ് സ്ട്രീറ്റ് അല്ലേ ചൈന സ്ട്രീറ്റ് ആ വൈകിട്ട് ചൈന സ്ട്രീറ്റ് കാണുന്നുണ്ട് അതല്ലേ ദെൻ ഇന്നത്തെ ഇന്നത്തെ ഞങ്ങളുടെ പ്ലാൻ ഞാൻ പറഞ്ഞോട്ട് പറഞ്ഞതുപോലെ കെ എൽ ടവറിൻ്റെ മുകളിലൊരു ലാക്കാഴ്ച അതെത്രയാണ് ഇന്നത്തെ നമ്മുടെ പ്ലാൻ ഏകദേശം ഉള്ളത് അപ്പോൾ അതിലേക്ക് ഉള്ള തുടക്കമാണ് മുൻകൂടി കഥാകൃത്താൻ പറഞ്ഞ് പെട്ട അമ്പത്തി എട്ടായി ഇനി വായിക്കാൻ കൂടെ മനോജും ഫാമിലിയും മറ്റു പലരും നമ്മൾ പിണങ്ങും അതുകൊണ്ട് വരക്കട്ടെ ഞങ്ങൾ കയറി ജെന്നി ഹൈലൈറ്റിലേക്കുള്ള യാത്രകളാണ് സ്റ്റാർട്ട് ചെയ്യുന്നത് വേണ്ടി സാധ്യതയില്ല അങ്ങനെ കാത്തിരിക്കാൻ വേണ്ടി സാധ്യത കാത്തിരിക്കുന്നു ജസ്റ്റ് പഠിതല്ലേ Allow me to introduce ourselves here. So, together with us is Mr. Thiban, my colleague. And my name is uh, Rajendra, but you can call me Rajan, he's here. Mm-hmm. Okay. So, I'm the tour guide for this uh, tour at the Gave Genting Highlands. So, I can't... Uh, I didn't do the group. Usually, we do group four days, five days. So, I can remember all the faces, some names, all. Only one day difficult for me. But you can remember me, yeah? So, in this tour, because I can't remember anybody, but I have the families, okay? So, timing is very important. Meeting point, location is very important. Because the places where you go, we cannot search. Like, Batu Caves is so big. And then, uh, Gendik Islands, much more bigger. So, you cannot find uh, the, the packs. So, when we say a time, it's better to be at that time. But easier, then I can bring everybody back. I don't want to leave somebody behind. Okay. So, this is uh, very important. So, uh, from here, approximately, if there is no traffic, about 30 minutes we can be in Batu Caves. Batu Caves. So, Batu Caves is on the way to Genting Highlands. Genting Highlands from here, if we never go to Batu Caves, it will take one hour. Not all the way to the top of the mountain. It's uh, till the cable car station. Okay, cable car station. And then from there, we must board the cable car to... the top 2000 meters above sea level now batu caves uh, is a hindu temple batu means uh, stone here yeah? in malay language which is our official language malay language is uh, commonly spoken in malaysia indonesia southern thailand southern philippine brunei uh, only this place they speak malay language is official language in our country english and malay the malay language is a uh, language that has been inherited from from the past from traders so that's why they have uh, nearly 40% of the world have sanskrit uh, tali tamil uh, they have arabic okay so this is the limestone hill which is approximately 400 million years old oh. okay which is uh, very near to uh, kuala lumpur malaysia mainly geographically is mountain and uh, fully jungle limestone okay jungle something like like india east india or kerala but much more dense right? very dense jungle yeah so we have got different kind of forest from the sea bed all the way to the mountain so uh, this uh, limestone is very common and limestones from historical days from the hindu period or the buddhist period or during the british days the indians have been using this limestone hill uh, cave as a place of worship the hindu temple or buddhist temple or taoist temple but this temple that we are going to go is a hindu temple dedicated to lord murugan the north indian they call kartik the south indian they call murugan or oh, many names there so this uh, murugan temple is located there with a 400 million years old uh, formation beautiful formation the caves there are almost about 10 caves only few caves have been used as a temple some caves not ventured inside some are controlled by what do you call it as the dark cave controlled by the uh, nature society 
then you need special permit to go in pitch dark. But this temple, no need permit, you can go anytime you want. But in order to go to the Murugan temple, you have to climb 272 steps. Uh, approximately about 10 to 15 minutes, so walk. 272 steps, so it means when you climb the steep hill, every, uh, about every 20 steps, there is a platform. 20 steps platform, okay? And now once you are inside the cave, there's additional steps going down and up. Okay, so when you go, when you reach on top, there is one temple, Murugan temple, and then the highest got another temple. Small temple, but uh, worshippers are big numbers. So this uh, Batu Caves is in the World Guinness Books of Record. For what? Uh, it is because during the Taipusam festival, that is the prime festival, Taipusam, end of summer, end of January, early February, about 1.2 million people will be there, devotees. Wow. Oh, great. Uh, so, uh, but they, they, they never stop you. Everybody can go up and down, go up and down. Not like Tripudi, they put you in the cage, cage like that, make it, uh, no, you just can go. 1.2 million people will be going up and down, no traffic jam, nothing <laughs> of the human. Okay, wow. so like that. So at that time, so usually this is the time where a lot of tourists will come, a lot of devotees will come all over the world and plus Malaysian people. But this is not the only place for Taipusam, but uh, in whole Malaysia, every state, Malaysia got 13 states. Almost all the 11 states, uh, they have Taipusam festival in all the hilly area Taipu of their temples. Hmm? So this uh, attraction, once you go in, uh, while you are climbing up, you see, you come across monkeys. Uh, don't feed them, because why? if you start to feed them, they don't bite you, but sometimes they want to grab the food they might scratch or even sometimes you don't want to give to this monkey you give the other monkey it might bite so it might carry rabies tangy or whatever we don't know what eh? so infection can happen okay so don't don't feed them but naturally they can get their food and then uh, pigeons are there you want to feed pigeons you can that one is not a problem and photograph of the monkeys is okay but don't hold the monkeys you know, because many people have been bitten before now, the other thing is, uh, photograph is allowed, no restriction, you can take any photograph you want to. So if you are Hindu, you can do puja, puja is going on until about 12 o'clock, okay, and then uh, up is where you can see Kuala Lumpur city from the top, the view is nice, eh? there is no haze, then you can see Kuala Lumpur city from the top, you can take photograph and all that, and the main attraction in front of the cave is a very huge statue of Murugan, 140 feet. Used to be the highest in the world, yeah? But uh, now uh, they have one in Salem, six meters higher than this. Uh, but this one is the earlier one, completed somewhere in, 2000, started in 2004, completed 2006. Uh, the huge Murugan statue. Hmm? Now, those who don't want to climb, not a problem. At the foot of the hills, there are many other temples. The main temple is Ganesha. Ganesha temple together with Durga, Shiva temple. Then uh, on the right hand side there is the Mahamariman temple. Uh, Navagraha are there. And on the far left of the entrance is the Hanuman and Vishnu temple. Okay, then there is Ramayana gallery, the Mahabharata gallery. Then all you have to buy tickets here. Yeah? But temples, no need to pay anything. So you can go any of the temple you want to. Okay, and if you are climbing up to the top Murugan temple, you don't have to remove your shoe. Okay, so you must, you can wear a shoe until the top. Uh, you are coming from India, so I don't have to tell you. Eh? Go into the temple, then remove. Ruled by Britain, 1786, till we got independent, 10 years after India, 31st August 1957. Then the federation took place. This is the India federation. So Malaysia have a federation of 13 states three federal government. Kuala Lumpur is the federal government. Okay, the administrative of all the whole uh, country. Like Delhi. Then we have Putrajaya. We have Labuan, three. Then we have, that, uh, we have all together uh, 11 states. Now, in uh, Peninsula Malaysia or West Malaysia, where you are now, uh, we have 11 states. 600 kilometers across the sea, there's another two Malaysia there, two states. That is Borneo, Sabah and Sarawak. You can see the map here. Yeah? So this is West Malaysia. This is West. 
going to the West here is Sumatra. If you go through the Straits of Malacca, it's India, Indian Ocean, Andaman Indian Ocean. This side you go across will be Vietnam, Cambodia, and then China, South China Sea. So across the sea, there's two states there, Sabah and Sarawak. Okay? So Malaysia to the north, you see the white there, here's the flag, that is Thailand. Four states bordering Thailand. So from Kuala Lumpur, you see the twin tower, there's Kuala Lumpur. Inland, one hour drive from the sea to inland. Malaysia is in there, Kuala Lumpur. So to the north, approximately seven to eight hours to the northern side is Thailand border. Four states are bordering Thailand. To the southern, from Kuala, from Kuala Lumpur to the southern, small island Singapore. is Singapore. Oh. Okay, Singapore. So uh, driving approximately four hours. Singapore, yeah. So there is a rail connection, road connection like this. North and South. So Malaysia is sandwiched between Thailand and Singapore. Singapore, okay. Singapore small island, not very big. 26 kilometer by 16 kilometer. That's all. Okay. <laughs> now to the Borneo side, 600 kilometers away, we have Sabah, Sarawak. They are bordering Indonesia, Brunei, and Philippines. Okay. So altogether 13 states. Population of Malaysia 33 million. Okay, approximately 33 million. Kuala Lumpur is about 10%, 3.3 million population. Okay, city. So Kuala Lumpur is the biggest city, not in, in, in size-wise, but in business-wise, capital, population, Kuala Lumpur is the biggest. Other cities in Malaysia is Penang, Ipoh, Johor. Four states are here. Four cities, big cities are here. Okay, and... Uh, Population wise, if you break 55%, you can say it is Muslim. Okay, about 28% are Chinese, Malaysian Chinese. Okay, so Chinese are basically their religion is Buddhism, Taoism, Christianity. Then about 10% will be Indians. The Indians, majority Hindu, followed by Buddhists, I mean, sorry, uh, Christians and Muslims, small population. The Hindus, majority. Then the others are basically Adivasi, okay, mixed race or whatever, like what you call Anglo-Indian, we call Eurasians, Christians, all, okay. So this is the proportion of Malaysian population. But difficult for you to identify because uh, Malay and Chinese all look alike. Okay, so only when they wear scarf, they know they are Muslim. If they don't wear, you won't know. Okay, they can be others. Eh? Indians easy to identify, like us, we are local Indians, okay, easy to identify, yeah? but Malay Chinese all look alike, so how you can identify, cannot, okay, but Malaysia we can identify, it's look, we know, okay, so you all difficult, so this is the proportion yeah, of Malaysian uh, population, reached from India here, from 2300 years ago, okay, so all the traders from uh, South India, they are doing trading with China, so they move from South India all the way to here, settle in South in uh, in uh, Malaysia, Indonesia, Thailand, Burma, uh, Cambodia. They were uh, stop over, then they married the local woman, assimilate, then slowly they moved to China for trading. This is how they were doing for thousands of years, like Silk Road, but by ship. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so the greatest will be the Cholas. Cholas, Rajendra Cholas, one of the greatest who has established a lot of empires here. Okay, and uh, that's why we go to Cambodia, you see a lot of Hindu temple, but no puja, because already abandoned. You go to Indonesia, a lot of Shiva temple, Brabandan. Okay, all collapsed, no puja, because okay, people already changed religion. Okay, and also in Malaysia, in the jungle, they have, they have found a lot of temples, dating easily 1800 years, all in the jungle, in the ground. The people have been stayed here before, they left ready, all abandoned. Okay? So this is how Hinduism then followed by Buddhism. Okay, Buddhism also same, established here, but uh, in Indonesia, in Malaysia, it's all collapsed. So, we have the biggest Hindu, uh, Hindu temple where? Angkor Wat, outside India, the biggest Hindu temple, but not functioning. We have the biggest Buddhist temple in Borobudur, Indonesia, not functioning. It's become archaeological site. 
Now, once it is populated by millions of people, okay, so what happens is only archaeological evidence, that's it. Okay, they have found eh, a lot of statues of Ganesha, okay, Shiva Linga, all this kind of thing. Eh? Now, uh, now the present Hinduism is from British days. Okay, so or, or there's a, if you go to Malacca, that is a, two hours to the south of Kuala Lumpur, it's a Portuguese colony, Portugal colony, and there you find some older temples there, still functioning, and also churches. But present temple like this, Batagap, is from British days, 1780. So Indian settlement again, following the British to Malaya, or Malaysia, Malaya. So again, Indians populated here, and then they start to build temple again. Okay, so Batagap is one of them. So Batagap was established in 1890s. Not very long, over 100 over years, in the 1890s, by a very rich man at that time. His name is Tabu Sami Pillai. So he worked for the. He was not born in India. He was born in Singapore, 1850s. He worked for a British uh, colonial office. Then he made his way from Singapore to Kuala Lumpur. Because Singapore before was part of Malaysia. They only become separate in 1957. Okay, joined back Malaysia in 1963. Separate again in 1965. Okay, so he was there. Chinese are doing mining. No law, no order, nothing. So after the British took from the British Chinese 1870, they make law and order. So they build the city, the town. You go to Chinatown, have you all been to Chinatown? Uh, you go to Chinatown, it's the oldest place in Kuala Lumpur. Very near from your hotel, Chinatown. So that is the first town built by the British. Two stories, made by bricks, with a five foot pedestrian walk. Family live on top and they do business below. So you are a carpenter, they have a carpenter shop. You are a blacksmith, they have a blacksmith shop. So that's how the British make. Then they make police station. Then they build the police station, the courthouse, survey department, government buildings, okay, sanitary, roads, rail. All of these come after coming of the British to Kuala Lumpur in 1870. So later, schools, hospital. Okay, so in those days, all schools are missionary schools. Nuns, nuns build the convent school. Fathers, Lasal brothers build the missionary schools for the boys and the girls separate. So before, all schools are run by the churches. But regarding of any race, anybody can go to study there, Malay, Chinese or Indian or Muslim, whatever. But it is a run by missionary Christian schools. Now, we have the national school. After 1970, the government took a lot of school back under their control become national school. Some missionary school are still there. Some already taken over by the government. So this is how Kuala Lumpur, not only Kuala Lumpur, the whole Malaysia evolved from primitive living to what you see today. Before coming of the British, we don't have railway, we don't have roads, we don't have uh, towns, cities, nothing. No law, no order. So just people living by village side, by the river or the or the seaside fishing. That's it. All are jungle. Mainly Adivasis are there. Whether they are Malay Muslim, whether they are Chinese, Buddhist, Tawis, or Malay the Indians, uh, Muslim, Christian, or uh, Hindus, all are migrants. Came from other part of the world and settled here. During Portuguese days, Dutch days, and also British days. So the original people are the Adivasi. Adivasi you cannot see in the town. You cannot see in the city. You cannot see in the Exxon Hotel. Okay? But you think this is Malaysia. These are Malaysian people. No. The original people are in the jungle. 22 tribes are there. To see them, you must go to Cameron Highlands. There you see on the road, you can see them. You must go to the National Forest, which is uh, two hours three hours from Kuala Lumpur, then another two hours by boat, you can see them. Okay? So, uh, Adivasis have been here more than 30 or 1000 years before they move out all the way to Australia. They look, eh, they look like African. Curly hair. Curly hair, short, eh? very dark skin, short hair, eh? curly hair, they are Adivasi. Only one tribe look like this. The other 21 tribes look like Chinese. 
because they came down from China area, Yunnan. Where this one comes from, maybe Africa and settled this side. So Adivasi is not only found in Malaysia, they are found in Indonesia, Thailand, Philippines, uh, what do you call it, uh, in uh, Australia, all the same. But they are very shy people, they don't mix with people. They only reserve in the jungle, they don't mix with anybody. So this is a general public, but as a tourist you come, something you don't know. You come and you think, oh these are Malaysian people, these are Malaysian, these are Like then you go back, okay? But in a, if you go in detail, then you know the original people of the land. India. Okay, I think Goa, eh? this uh, remains are there. So from here, 1511 until 1641, Portuguese Christianity at that time. 1641, Portuguese collapsed, replaced by Dutch. And 1824, Dutch collapsed, replaced by East India Company from India. Okay, then in summer 1848, from British India, Malaysia, Singapore become crown colony directly from London. So this is the history of Malaysia, colonial. 57, we got independent. 63, federation of all the states, including Singapore. 65, Singapore become separate. Brunei don't want to join. So we have with 13 states. Okay, and uh, now we have, uh, just like India, uh, democratic system, every five years we got election. And then we choose our uh, political party, prime minister. But the unique thing is we don't have a president, the ninth sultan. Okay, so ninth sultan will take turn to become the king of Malaysia. Function like president. Okay, oh, we are already in Batikev now. You see on your right, that is Batikev. Uh, so this is a very famous uh, temple in India, so in Malaysia. Raulia Patamaniji Kralupan Prabhupada Nere Thida Ingotana Batu Kevs. The Kevs and Ekus Namaku, Ariana, Pudimala, and then Pushtamal and photos and videos and control on it. You'll number there to go on a bottle of Filu Ariala. Abo, Korea, not the Ganda Mundo, Hoyle Molo, not the Keridora, Pono Vadiki, but the Kevs and the Korachar Tangu Parienzia. Are Oriman Kursami and the Kadan Vichit Lover? Are the Gundane, Verna, Keri Trichuana? Tercuba anda tu fashion aja, fashion aja ikut anda ni, mulai keri baru anda ni, gula, nama kami buat sekian tu, orang mana kurang. Tapi nak raya alkara ni, ada orang korang perahu gula kena. Dapatlah perahu gelar kanan korai. Perahu gelar ke fashion gelar kanan orang. Orang awal tu ni ker. Perahu gelar fashion gelar putih gelar fashion gelar kanu. Rasanya macam mana? 